I know that I already did a special emergency episode about the disaster of a sand of, of that Sandoval Howie Mandel interview, but I want to give you the opportunity to share your thoughts if you would like to, because I feel like you probably have some thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, to be fair, I did not watch the entire thing, but I did watch enough of it to understand. Yeah. It. I don't blame you for not watching the whole thing. It was, it was hard it was to too get through. It was too much. It was too much. It was and ugly. It was. Um, overall, I I was mostly actually disappointed with Howie Mandel. Howie! Because, like, the thing is, I don't <laughs> expect anything less from Sandoval. Yeah. Like, that his main mission in, is to try <laughs> to spin the narrative, and we knew this. We and we and we've heard the reports. So like I wasn't even surprised. But what surprised me is that Howie wasn't more professional, in my opinion. Um, and I understand. I'm not. I'm not blind to the fact that he Howie did this as a favor to his people at his uh, his producer at on his podcast. Yeah. Apparently, it's the drummers. You've already covered that, so people already know. But still, like at least pretend. To, to care to care Asshole. that was my issue like he he did like he just went in he was like whatever he he's he's trying to minimize it he's try, like what people like whenever i would tell anybody about oh have you heard about scandal people would be like it's an affair don't those people do that all the time if you don't watch the show it's like super easy to just categorize it as an affair people have them all the time but that's but it's your job to be briefed on what's going on like it's reached CNN, it's reached all these things. That's the whole point of you having him on. So I thought it was a waste of everyone's time listening because he didn't do his homework. And I it, like, and I didn't. I also really didn't like how he spoke down to his daughter. He's really shutting her down I, a lot. For real, it was really hard to watch. And I actually would love to know how his wife felt about how he was treating his daughter, their daughter. Yeah, because like I, I don't like obviously that. I don't obviously watch his show regularly, so I don't know if that's how he normally talks to his daughter. But yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, he I, he had a huge opportunity to to get a wider net of people listening uh, to his show, and he exactly. squandered it. I don't think he. I think he was a little cavalier to think that this show wasn't as big as it is, and um, I don't think that he. I really think he thought like, oh, whatever, I'm doing this favor. Like, who's going to care? And everyone did. And I, his daughter, to be fair, tried warning him several times throughout this that he was going to get in trouble. And I just don't think that he he got it. She did. She goes, you're going to be in trouble for saying that. And he's like, uh, why? Well, if you had even tried a little bit yeah. to care, then. Yeah. Just or to like, do any research. You don't even know who Sheena is. Yeah. And, and the thing is, he is always uh, preaching that he's an advocate for mental health because he has his own issues with ADHD and he is OCD as well. So it's just so baffling to me how they were practically uh, dismissing and making fun of Ariana's mental um, health struggles. It was, yeah. I, I think he made a, like, I mean, he's going to, he's Tyree Mandel. He'll bounce back from it. It's whatever. I already saw him doing a little bit of whatever. I didn't really listen to the clips of him being interviewed the next day, but. Yeah, by fucking, what's his name? What's his name? Bi from Extra? Billy? Billy? Yeah. Oh, Billy, Billy Bush? Yeah, like he's already problematic enough and he likes to just shrug off any sort of controversy anyway. So, fuck yeah. So, whatever. Um, yeah. I also, I, the more I thought about what, what Tom said about Ariana be in, by the way, what he said about Ariana with like how she was going to not go to the reunion, quit the show, whatever. That was a hypothetical that they had brought up in therapy. He's like, we said, I said, hypothetically, what would you do if we broke up? And she said, hypothetically, I would quit the show, sell the house, whatever. I still don't even think that's that big. Like, Tom, so what? Weren't you going to, if you're going to break up, wouldn't you sell the house? Well, so? yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you would have to sell the house. So that would definitely be a step. The thing is, he is using, taking conversations in their therapy sessions that are actually private. private. So that's fucking rude. Um, 
and using it against her like she was being open and honest and those were her initial feelings. And we have no idea in the context of this therapy session is just like the therapist could have literally led with be as raw, the most raw first thing that you think of when that, that happens. Like we have no idea in the context and he's just using it to try to make her look crazy and yeah. like like he made forced forced him to stay in this relationship and i think that you said some in in your emergency podcast episode so what so what if she did do all of that that's her choice yeah so your issue is you want to control how she's going to react <laughs> after you yeah. break up with her yeah. and that's none of that's you have no say in how she reacts if she doesn't want to be on the show anymore if she doesn't want to talk about it on the show like and the thing is if if she doesn't want to talk about it saying that she would quit the show is the best thing because then if she stayed on the show and tried to hide it that would be the issue mm-hmm. but he wants everything to be he wants he keeps on talking about brand 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 it's right? i think it's him who right? Ooh, was really point. trying to figure out would this destroy my brand not <gasps> not her ooh that gave me chills ooh let's let's un- let's go into that a little bit more cuz he did keep talking about the brand the brand the brand and when you say it like that Cause he's like, she was going to union that translates. Now that you say that to how was I going to look then if, she, if I'm the one who breaks up with her and she doesn't go to the reunion and I look like the bad guy. Cause I broke up with her and now we're not this perfect couple. Yeah. And I'm, and it's like, I'm the mean one. Cause everyone knows Ariana's the best. <laughs> exactly. And he seemed resentful, which is, so, it's, it's so funny. They're in therapy, right? So he was trying to use therapy as a way to exasperate their problems, to force her into thinking, maybe I should be out of this relationship. I think trying to put it on her maybe at some point. And then when it wasn't working and she actually was listening to his, the things that he was unhappy with within the relationship and started making an effort and change, he panicked because he had a whole plan oh, yeah. on how he was going to exit this relationship. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work out. He wasn't being honest about why he wanted to go to therapy. And that's not yep. on her. She was going in. Two people were going into therapy with two different re- like reasons. But like he wasn't being honest about his reasons. He was, They went in to work on the relationship, with, which is what one of the parties did, which is Ariana. And the other one was checked out and trying to figure out ways to gaslight her and possibly turn her into to the villain and it, and it, it didn't work out that way. Yeah. Also let's, let's really circle back to the fact that he is in there telling them what she said in a therapy session. Like, yeah. That really is dirty. That's very dirty. It's very yeah. dirty. Um, I, the thing is Tom has had opportunities now the two at least at the reunion and um, with the Howie Mandel interview to really, turn this around for him in the in any way he could which would i think he if he was going to do this he needed to just own own everything it needed to be no excuses no buts no this she caused me it needed him to be raw and completely like i am a fucking asshole there's there's something that i need to to reflect on of why i have a pattern of this mm-hmm. because i don't i feel like people don't they want a redemption story from people and is and I'm sure he does have fans and people are dying for him to just take ownership of it. And I think that's why this is, is he doesn't understand why this is so big. It's because you guys are not taking any accountability. It's really weird. It's really weird. Even though he tries to pepper that in, doesn't he? He's like, I, I by the way, I'm not excusing myself. These are not excuses. I what I did was wrong. But then, and then he says some horrible shit. That's the thing is, then it, it negates that. Anything you said. It just <laughs> negates it. So it, it means matter, nothing. Right? It yeah. means nothing. Yeah. Then there's this episode. This episode was so insane. <laughs> I, like, I, I can't even, like, 
mouth. I can't, I like, I can't, I fell asleep to it too. Like I watched it twice last night and then I put it on like when I fell asleep, like on my phone, I put my, I turn, always have my phone on, but I flip it upside down so the screen doesn't keep me up. And I like, let it, let my phone like lull me to sleep. Uh-huh. I turned on the episode. So it's like, I just need to, I want it to permeate into my subconscious. Oh my god! Because it is just so. It, I, that's, so, that seems dangerous. You want those type of. It is a little bit. Little, is that little toxicity bit. in your dreams while you slumber. Yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't. Did you, did you feel dreams. rested? Because I don't like. <laughs> well, I, to be honest, I haven't felt rested in quite some time because <laughs> someone asked me the other day, like, how do you keep up with all these episodes? And I was like, oh, wait, you know, I don't sleep enough. But yeah, I I then woke up, watched it again, watched the. I have to say, Lala's appearance on Watch What Happens Live was like a normal Watch What Happens Live appearance. And so after Schwartz's, you're like, okay, that was fine. But like, yeah. Nothing will top Schwartz's appearance. Oh, so. no. It was just, you know what, though? Like, I just never thought that we would get even more. Like, I, when I, once I think that we're going to, like, not get any more than Sandoval's interview with Howie Mandel happens, and I'm like, what is going on over on that side of the this, this scandal? Like, who is allowing this to happen? Also, I know we talked last week about uh, if uh, – Sandoval and Raquel should be on the show next year. Like I, they're about to get themselves fired if they keep doing what they're doing. Okay. On that note, I actually want to address this. This is the problem. They're little ego monsters right now because when Howie asked if they would be, if Sandoval would return next season and, and Sandoval answered with, I mean, the ratings have never been higher. I went I bingo right now. He it, Raquel too. He thinks, I'm untouchable. Yeah. Uh, and he's not fucking wrong. This is the unfortunate thing about the Dallas. And because the ratings are so high, they wouldn't fire him. And that's the unfortunate thing is that they might get a Sandoval. You shouldn't have done that. Mm. He's literally going to go, what are you going to do? Fire me. And they're like, no, because you can't not have Sandoval back if he's willing to come back. It's true. I know. And like the Bravo fans do this a lot where we're like, fire them. But if they're good for the ratings and the almighty dollar, which is really all NBC is going to care about at the end of the day, they're going to have them back. Same thing with Raquel. If Raquel wants to come back and they can figure out a way to make it work, they don't care about corruption. Look, they have Erica Jane back all the time. Oh, I don't think that they would take it, which it's more of them being mad that like, they keep spoiling stuff. So eventually it's going to make the ratings go down. I feel like they keep t- talking too much. They're like ruining the episodes for Bravo. Ag- agreed. That's- how, the reunion. Like how would he want, why would he want to tell his, also I want to point something out. When he's like, I want to tell my side of the story. Everyone else is. I'm like, no, no, Ariana's not. Sure. Ariana is not doing, Raquel even, I get that she's kind of done that with that TMZ thing, but yeah. like, it's not necessarily. It's still not all the way. You shouldn't have done that, Schwartz. I mean, Santa. <laughs> They're the same person that. at this point, right? They are. Um, all right, let's let's get into the recap because it's like there's so much to actually dissect in that that we'll probably keep circling back. Yeah. To this anyway. So yes, let's get into the recap. When my cats are healthy, they are happy, and that makes me happy. But, you know, I'm not a mind reader, so I obviously don't know when they're unwell. Helping me keep tabs on my cat's health is just one reason I use Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter's ultra-absorbent crystals trap odor instantly, no more cat bathroom smell, and let me just tell you, this is not a joke. It is confusing how well these things work. It, like, disappears into the crystals. I've just gotten so accustomed to scooping with traditional clumping litter. Scooping the litter is usually like disgusting, but it's not with pretty litter. I, I'm i just really confused as to the sorcery of these crystals. It's the super light crystal base that it minimizes that dust and that mess. The crystals last up to a month, so you're scooping less, 
and you don't have to go to the trash can as much. But I mean, I'm telling you, you're scooping less because usually I would miss a day before with my old clumping litter and it would be a disaster. But because of these absorbent crystals, it's like not the same. It's just, it's been very confusing how, uh, how well this works. I'm still, I don't get it. I'm not mad about it. I just don't get it. The coolest thing about Pretty Litter, though, is that it changes colors to help monitor early signs of potential illness in your cat, including urinary tract infections, potential kidney issues. This would have really come in handy when I took my cat, Tiger, to the vet recently, and they asked what her urine has been like. And I said, what? I don't know. Would have helped if I could have said, according to this chart of the color chart of the Pretty Litter chart, this is what it, you know what I mean? It would have really helped. Pretty Litter also ships free to my door in a small lightweight bag. I never run out of it. And I don't have this like huge container taking up all this space in my house. Pretty Litter helps me keep tabs on my cat's health and keep odors down. You and your cat are going to love Pretty Litter as much as we do. Go to prettylitter.com slash she speaks to save 20% on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash she speaks to save 20%. Prettylitter.com slash she speaks. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. So we open on the kiss and people cheering. And Schwartz is like, is that for us? Like he didn't know. Like he didn't think that was going to happen. And Raquel's like, let's go somewhere more private. And then they go to the scene, the clip we've seen in the pre in the trailers where they kiss there. And the kiss is dis- disgusting. It's disgusting. But the confessional, she his lips are like soft and sweet, delicate kisses. It's hard to look at this. Like it's, it was hard for my eyes to look at this, to take notes on this. Like it was hard to pay attention to this. And then Schwartz stops kissing her and is like, oh, sorry, I won't make out with you again. Sorry. Oh God. So it, like, it really is giving me the feeling of this is a cover up. Like this is a this isn't like a there was no chemistry connection. this was all, this was a spike kiss if i've ever seen one spike kiss for sure spike kiss and it it did feel cover up it did yeah. feel it like now i am going with that i am going you do, with so now that. you think schwartz knew yeah it's giving me that creepy gross like it's like a two birds situation two birds one stone like Sandoval needs it to be kind of a cover up and also fuck Katie. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, well, it might as well. And then, Ra- like, I would like to know when Raquel's confessional was filmed because she's like, I feel giddy. I feel happy. I feel excited. I feel like maybe this could be something. I want to know when she's also going to have one authentic line in a confessional that doesn't sound like she rehearsed it ahead of time there's not going to be she's she has no she doesn't know how to (laughs) have a conversation in real time she everything has lala's not wrong she has to map everything out i don't know why but she is incapable of having a free-flowing conversation with anyone (laughs) it's really true though lala was like called that it's like if it's the conversation strange. doesn't go exactly how she wants it to, she's like, I wasn't prepared for this. So like, I can't speak. Yeah. Mm. Schwartz is like, it feels, it feels illegal. Raquel's like, you little kissing bandit. Okay. God, I'm sorry. It's, it's just. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. And it's like, they did this <laughs> just to, well, Mm-hmm. Allegedly to probably cover up, well, definitely Raquel at least to cover definitely up definitely Raquel. Uh, what she's doing with Sandoval. We're now we're now we're feeling like Schwartz knew it too, and now and they're also absolutely doing it to hurt Katie. It's yeah, so like one hundred percent. Like Sandoval has said, he's like the way Sandoval was so pissed that Katie had the nerve to be upset about this. Like they were being attacked. As if they were in a full-blown relationship. It's like, no, you're missing the part where Katie was hurt. 
and had every right to be hurt, you asshole. Yeah, it was, it was, the disc, the, the disconnect is crazy to me. Like, you guys are divorced. Also, I don't think they are. I think they're yeah. separated. I don't actually think they're actually signed any paperwork. So they're actually married. And <laughs> if, if, it's just really not that difficult to see why this is disrespectful. It's not. And it's funny because I, we didn't have the context. We just kept seeing the teaser clip before the show aired. I had no idea Katie was at the time when we first saw this clip of them kissing. I had no idea Katie was actually at the res- like resort within like eye shot like shot of it. That changes and, everything too. And that and that they did it because of that because yes. she was like right there and they were like ha ha fuck you watch us kiss. Yeah, that changes everything because they're trying to make it seem like before the show aired like yeah I mean we just like just had a moment and like it was just so like it, like in the moment no it was premeditated calculated and petty beyond petty Petty. yeah like this was really gross and again like i'm more disappointed in schwartz Mm -hmm. than raquel because raquel has just made it very abundantly clear she does not give a fuck about katie so i'm not Mm -hmm. even surprised by that behavior but schwartz i'm not surprised but he just he he's acting as if he wants to have some type of friendship with katie and it's weird the way he's going about it like i want to be friends with katie but I also want to like make out with people in front of her to just to see what will happen because it's the forbidden fruit. Like that's some bullshit. Yeah, he's he's definitely sending those mixed messages, acting like a victim at the same time as being the perpetrator. Yeah, and even Raquel's like, Katie already hates me, so might as well. Wow. Okay. No, you have no heart. I don't. Schwartz- I just don't get it. Like I don't understand why they want. Well, I mean, I guess her, now. Her, yeah, I, well, yeah. now I okay. Guess now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> forgot I forgot about the whole sand of all of it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like Raquel is legitimately doing this to cover up. She's doing it to make Sandoval jealous. Yes, for sure. One hundred sure, percent sure. to make Sandoval jealous. She's doing it to cover up for the fact that she's already. I'm saying she fucked Sandoval. Sandoval tried to say that they just kissed. I'm like, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. See what he he used tricky words because then Howie Didn't Mandel he? yes because Howie did ha, did have a follow up question so it was just kissing nothing else and he was like I mean there were other things so he just doesn't want to because if he says have had sex it again it, that just looks really bad so he has to use like little faint like filler words that could could be mm-hmm. anything but it was but also could be sex mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And so, and it was also in the backyard. So, in like, the backyard, what? Where was Ariana? You were locked out. I just, yeah, because she was sleeping. You know why? Because she was mourning the loss of her dog that died that day. And so, while she was sleeping, that's okay. crazy. That's twisted. So, so, again, we said this last week. Both the Toms seem to really, really uh, part of their attracted, like th- what makes them attracted to someone is like it being forbidden, naughty, not supposed to do it. Classic. C- kind of getting, could get caught. Ooh, voyeuristic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Schwartz is so drunk that he's like, I'm not going to tell Katie. And she's like, uh, everyone saw. And he's like, I swear he legitimately didn't remember what had just happened with people cheering. I swear he's that drunk where he's like. Oh, okay. I believe that 100%. Yeah. yeah, he's that fucked up. Because that's what got him in trouble in his relationship with Katie yeah. this whole time. Yes. Him just <laughs> drunkenly making out with people and not really remembering all the details of it. Uh, Yeah. Meanwhile, Lala brings Katie, Christina, James, and Allie back to her room, and Sheena calls. And so she, it's funny. Sheena has her first agenda, which she's already pissed at Lala. And yes. she's like, what happened to you tonight? And Lala <laughs> has a tone. She does. She's like, <laughs> she's like, I went to dinner and I came back to the room. She's like, I'm not even about to feel bad. I don't even care. Like, yeah, she was like, I can already feel she, she, she Lala's not interested in the passive aggressive way that no. Sheena wants to go about this. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> she's like, say. <laughs> in her tone, Lala was like, you want to know if I'm with Katie and I'm not going to, unless you ask me directly, I'm not telling you. <laughs> the sick thing is, I think that Sheena knew she was with Katie and that is why. 
she went, okay, well, we can talk about that tomorrow, which LOL, because, you know, I knew what she was doing there. But then she goes, but did you see Schwartz and Raquel make out? Because everybody was saying that happened, but I didn't see it. And I'm like, oh, so you did that because you knew she was with Katie and you wanted her to hear that. And I fucked up. I, Emily, I felt the same way too. The hurt, the, because again, sorry, Sheena, we like you now, but uh, we have to go back to the past. <laughs> but we got to go back here, okay? Um, <laughs> Sheena, girl, you're not good Mm-mm. at the like, Lies, you know what I mean. Your 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 poker face isn't subtle. good. Your poker face is not good. You're too excited. Mm. You should have talked Just, a little hear, bit. You can feel the smile. You yes, can hear it. Yes, and then when they pan back, she is smiling. Uh, <laughs> but it's like you should have like talked a little bit more about your disappointment with her not coming. Before just getting too giddy to launch into the mm-hmm. to, to the Katie bit of it, I absolutely think a producer told her that they're all in the room together and would and probably stir the pot like you should. They're all together right now. I don't know. Maybe be a mm-hmm. good time to to tell Lala. Oh yeah, that's that's a good call. And Lala obviously doesn't match that energy. She's not like what? Oh my god! She's like this is dirty. Okay, you need to find out if that really happened. And I, Sheena thought it was going to go a different direction or, you know, maybe she didn't. Maybe she was like, I hope this ruins their night. I think it was a little bit of both. A little bit of both. (laughs) Katie's devastated. And I just felt so bad for her because you could see the gut punch. You could see it in her face, her whole body. Like you could see her entire being just like, you could feel it, feel it through the screen. Yeah. That was hard to watch actually. Cause she, like, I could feel her wanting to go into a shell and yeah. like like she just kept covering her face. Yeah. It was really sad. And they were having such enjoyment at her expense, which was really icky. And then Sheena calls back and she runs and gets Brock. And Brock, she, Lala's like, why are people cheering for that? And Brock's like, because they want Schwartz to be happy. What? Fuck you. See, Brock, you got like, again, like I just was coming around to you and that really did not sit well with me the way you did that. Like that was weird. <laughs> and I also want to go back to how Katie's like, you see Brock three times a year and like even you said this is weird that he's asked you to be in his wedding. Right. And so Brock, you don't know him. You guys are just <laughs> going off of bullshit, you know? You don't know him, like period. <laughs> Period. You don't know him. <laughs> Period. <laughs> okay. And so Lala really coming through. Like Katie did nothing to that girl to deserve that. She goes, she is a disgusting swamp creature. And she is <laughs> like, okay, no, no, no. We're not, going We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that on camera right now. That's not what this scene is going to turn into. We'll talk about it tomorrow, okay? And I'm, I'm just bummed. Then she turned. Then she switches. I'm just bummed you missed a special moment tonight. Ugh. That's all. I'm like, we are not talking about that now. Sorry, you cannot. You have missed that. your moment. <laughs> you can't. You, you can't, can't like end. backtrack because the way you were trying to set Katie up to be like embarrassed didn't work out in your favor. <laughs> like <laughs> we have nothing. We don't care about anything no. else right now. Okay? See, that's like again. We keep telling <laughs> like Sheena got to get a coach or something because she tries to do these messy moments. Moments, which Always. I'm not mad at <laughs> exactly but she does a show wrong. we have to have messy <laughs> moments but she can never like execute it right and that's my problem with her always she know how do you let Lala correctly. take that from you she intercepted that messy moment and flipped it <laughs> like Missy Elliott reversed it <laughs> <laughs> what happened The f- it was wide open for you to be messy yes, and you because you have no. every right because Lala is sucking right now at being a wedding participant but no no oh, I don't even God. know why I'm doing those sports analogies like I watch sports it's because I saw the air movie and I think I'm a sports oh, person was it now good? it was great oh, was I'd it? watch it again it was great okay good to good. know did you go to a theater to see it I did go to a theater I a like theater a, a theater like it okay. should, like it should be <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, Katie goes to bed as saying, she's like, I am more upset with Tom because you know, Raquel, fuck her. Who cares? But obviously Tom owes me more and he does. Yeah. 
He does. And that's how I think we all should feel in terms of this part, the Schwartz and Tom parts. Like, I mean, the Schwartz and Raquel parts. Like, yeah. <laughs> Raquel, fuck you, whatever. But Tom did this so intentionally. Yeah. And that's why when he acts later, like it was nothing big. It's like, no, no, you intentionally did it to say, fuck you, Katie. That's yeah. why it's like, whoa. And I think, he, damn. you know what? He got too comfortable because he has been <clears throat> such a fan favorite. No matter, oh, yeah. he's done so many terrible things and we've all, I'm guilty of it, been so forgiving of him, pra- practically not even giving us, him a slap on the hand for any of it, mm-hmm. excusing it away. And he's used to being able to do this. So for him, this was a normal day. It's like, okay. And that's why he was, I think throughout this episode, he is so cav- like, I'm sorry, that's my favorite word, cavalier about everything because he's <laughs> like, um, the fans will never turn on me because I'm cute. I'm so and cute. I'm cute and I'm I'm doughy eyed. So mm, sorry, Katie. They're gonna be on my side. I feel like he was super confident in that. He's Mr. Shrug it off and oh God. Oh man. I, I guess I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's I hate this because now I'm just seeing it. Like he's always done it, but like it's yeah. just sticking out so much more to me. Uh this and now that you now that you see it, you can't unsee it. But yep. like he'll start with his doughy, like, like, like sorry, like clip my underarm hairs to like feel her out you know what I mean and then when it doesn't happen he gets vicious and, and he just vicious. like he switched he switches and he does it that is his tactic starts out nice if they don't take the bait if they're not ha- happy about it vicious and then he caps it he sandwiches it with another dopey moment like <laughs> like running out <laughs> like a fucking his like no bones in his body like <laughs> Yeah, that last that last conversation at the hibachi place was we'll get to that because it was bad. All right, now we're in Sheena and Brock's room for the party. And let me let me say something. <laughs> like I th- we've seen these people be wasted, but never before has it been more obvious that there was it was snowing. Oh, yes, yes. Whoa, yes. like Tom especially. Like Tom was like, he was he was like dancing all over the place. I'm like, bro. He's like, Raquel, Raquel. Clearly uncomfortable and wanting to say more about it. Like, it's just obviously we know the energy and, you know, we've all seen the clip a million times already because it was floating around. But Ariana's like, Tom, you're being so annoying. And then he's like, sorry, I'm just excited because Schwartz and Raquel made out. Ariana is also extremely wasted. We don't really see Ariana wasted, wasted too often, but she's pretty visibly wasted. Oh, yeah. But when she is, it's like gold. Yeah. Like, her, like it's it's crazy, but like in a good way. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> give me details. And- <laughs> And her, her confessional is perfect. She's like, just when you thought it was safe, you know, now we got this to deal with. And, and she, and she puts her hand, all of her reactions are us. She puts her hands over mouth. She's like, they were cheering. Like, oh my God, this is bad. Like this is fucked up. But of course, Tom is not feeling the same way. No. And they're all kind of, I mean, I would say that Ariana isn't trying to ruin the moment, but she's appropriately mortified but trying not to take it to a place of like i'm gonna kill everyone's vibe but she's right appropriately mortified how about that um but then tom makes the hilarious joke which you can tell is born out of being so jealous that this happened and he throws tom schwartz's room key and goes here's schwartz's room key why don't you go whatever and yeah. they're like oh tom and you know where that came from from tom santa oh oh that was so like he was so clearly and visibly jealous that it was uncomfortable yeah it was like it was almost anger yeah like when he flung it at raquel it was like Ooh. i dare you to go fuck my friend right now yes i dare you to go do it i dare Ooh. do it here it do is it. here's your card here's the card go do it you know you want to you know you want to you little slut it was like, oh my back God. Kind of yeah, dude, he's, yeah. And then they like, let's go have some fun. And they go jump in the pool. Before that though, Tom slaps Raquel on her little, on her butt. That's, that's okay. I think that's why, again, this is why this is so crazy. I feel like people don't like, usually when we hear about affairs, 
we hear about it secondhand, right? So you don't get to visually start. We have, I've never seen a, an affair on camera, like for real. No, right? Ever real. in my no, life. You're right. You're right. Good point. Like for real. Like you hear about them. Yes. You may know someone that has yes. had that happen, but to see it happen. Yeah. Cro- yeah. Like you have, yeah. like, that's, that's, yeah. I, I, yeah. guys, that's wild. Yeah. To see how someone yeah. lied and manipulated someone for seven months, we have it all on film. No, Pia, that's a good point. And thank you. I couldn't figure out why I was just, why I'm so shook by this. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never actually witnessed, even in real life, like I've never been around, I've never been around people who ha- who've had an affair and found out later, like what? They were having an affair? Yeah. So this is my first time witnessing it. And it is crazy. It's crazy. Like you can't, you can't believe it. And the thing is we had, this this show has been on for so long that we have developed like, yes, we don't know these people. We're not delusional, but we, we do have some type of relationship with them because we've followed their journey for 10 years at this point. So yeah, like it feels personal. It does. It does. Because they're lying to everyone. Yeah. And us. And production. It's on camera. They're filming. Like, it's it's like, it's one thing if it, this is just real life and you're like, you know, lying to the people around you. But they're filming they're a film- television show. They're getting mic'd up. They're talking to production. Oh, my God. It's a whole, like, I've never seen anything like it. It's It's wild. It's so wild. I think it wouldn't have been as crazy if they hadn't filmed this season. Like if the affair yes. came out like after. Like in the off season. Off, yeah. Yeah. We're all learning it together. Yeah. Even the cast. Like that's the like, cast. when does that happen? <laughs> oh my God. This is so insane. Meanwhile, Katie, Christina, and Lala are in bed and Katie has texted Tom like, I'm, I've never hated you more. Like it's, it's done. Like don't ever talk to me again. And obviously for Katie, it's like, uh, you know, we, we, we're divorced. Yes. You know, like go do what you got to do, but do it in a way that's not in front of me. Yeah. This is just mean. And then she says, I hope it was worth it. And I felt that. Right. I felt it. And the thing is like, I know Katie is known for doing her rants or drunk, her tequila Katie rants, but this was one of the most justified rant yes. Katie has probably ever done. And I don't even think she went hard on his ass. I feel yeah. like it was all pretty tame for what she was probably feeling. Yeah, that was, it was just such a blatant, intentional disrespect. Yeah, it, it just really is. Like, and the thing is, he doesn't even like Raquel. <laughs> That's what makes it worse. He's like, I don't even like her. Well, okay. We'll get, so the next day, okay, this early morning spa activity, they looked so fucking tired. Like Raquel looks tired. Ariana looks tired. Ariana looks like like painfully tired. Yeah. It's like, Sheena, you shouldn't have scheduled it. Like, how early is this? It's like 8 a.m.? See, see, this is one of the things I wouldn't have been mad if Lala skipped out on because yeah. that's unreasonable. So it, even, it looked like everyone did. Like there were a bunch of place cards for people and only like four of them showed up because it was like Sheena. No, yeah, that's me. that's one of those uh, things that you plan ahead of time and you forget about like how that is, that's not a practical thing to, to do after a night like you're going to have. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like bo- but, b- booking a boat ride at 8 a.m. or something. Like. Exactly. But Sheena complains about Lala not being there. It it is unfair because she had a whole lunch with them saying like, I'll be there for all the events, all the oh, big right, stuff, right. all the big stuff. So yeah, this though is one she could miss because it was a very small, quiet, close quarters situation. Yeah. Um, but it leads to them talking about how Raquel and Schwartz made out. And what does Raquel do? She goes, I was thinking maybe I should walk down the aisle with Schwartz instead of Joey. And Sheena goes, I'm not mad at that idea. And Raquel goes, she goes ahead and she FaceTimes Schwartz and he says, sure. Ariana's confessional. I'm starting to think that Raquel might have feelings for Schwartz. It's like she's living in some sort of a rom-com and I think she's the only one in it. (laughs) That's the 
truest statement ever. Oh, God. All these lines that, like, knowing what we know now. Then and- Sheena's friend there goes, I hope Katie has another dinner reservation tomorrow night with a good view. You fucking. This is where I have to say, talk some shit. There are the, there are certain types of women and Sheena's type of like, this is why Ariana is always kind of like in the middle. And I've, I've said this before. The worst part of Ariana is her friendship with Sheena and her relationship with Sandoval. That's always been my opinion, in my opinion, her downfall. Cause she's justified mm-hmm. a ton of nasty shit Sheena's done and a ton of awful shit Sandoval's done. Right. And look at this friend that's co-signing what Raquel is doing. Right. But it's in the name of Sheena because Sheena's like told this narrative. And I get that Katie's been awful to Sheena, but Sheena's also done shit to Katie over the years that always gets overlooked as well. Right. Yeah. And they're, I agree. And here they are like, how are you looking at this chick Raquel going, she's awesome. She's a real solid chick. How are you not picking up on a weird vibe? Because they have everybody... On, in Sheena's camp right now has tunnel vision of mm-hmm. like let's destroy Katie yeah. like and they they're willing to overlook uh Raquel being a weirdo and a weirdo yeah you know and because it's because the plan right now is Katie came on this trip to destroy my wedding mm-hmm. so I'm going to destroy her that's the narrative right now even though that's not like Katie's not really really doing her presence I get it is antagonistic for yes. you but yes, she's yes, not yes. actively doing anything yes mhm <laughs> When I found out Cozy Earth wanted to sponsor the pod, I was like, oh my God, the synergy of this. Cozy is my number one goal in life. And I'm on a quest to find loungewear that is cozy, obviously, and flattering. So I used my own code, she speaks at cozyearth.com, to purchase the loungewear set that they have. It's it's on its way. I will let you know how it goes. I'm very excited. What I did receive from Cozy Earth, though, thank you, by the way, Cozy Earth, were their sheets. I got the sheets that are made from viscous from bamboo. They also do come in linen. And I talked about it last week. These sheets, they're I like a soft cold, a little bit of a cool touch. They're temperature regulating. So that's why they have that cool touch to them. Easily the best sheets I've ever felt in my life, hands down. It is no wonder Cozy Earth has been on Oprah's favorite things list, like five years now. So Cozy Earth also makes bath products, also made from viscous from bamboo. This is responsibly sourced too, by the way, which is important. Their bath products come in a plush collection and also a waffle collection. I'm about to just be getting everything on the Cozy Earth website using my code. So, okay, right now, Cozy Earth provided an exclusive offer for my listeners today. 35% off site-wide when you use the code she speaks. So go to CozyEarth.com, shop around, get 35% off when you put in my code she speaks at checkout. No, so now James and Allie are by the pool. Did you hear James called Allie Bubba? They had to put a subtitle there. And I was like, oh, say what? I missed that. Yeah, they they purposely left it in because they subtitled it. Thanks, Bubba. I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, we. But here comes Schwartz. Schwartz is like, guys, uh," acting like nothing happened. No one will hang out with me. Uh, Everyone's sleeping or hungover. Uh." He's like, what did I miss last night? James is not having it. Jay- I've never seen James this serious. I know. I was. 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 I was team James on this one. He was so level headed, reasonable and clear. Yeah. He was like, I'm not fucking around. He's like, are you serious? You made it with Raquel last night. Schwartz like, I did. OK, I did. Honestly, I think Schwartz was going to try and pull off the I forgot. I don't remember card i really oh he's he was he's that's his mo it's like he, he really was and knew he wasn't gonna get away with it yeah he's like let's see if i can no i can't I'm yeah decided. he was testing the waters with james he was mm-hmm. like what does he know mm-hmm. yeah yeah and schwartz goes i don't have a thing going on with raquel and james is like cut the shit don't like don't even do that 
But when he said, I don't have a thing going with Raquel, it kind of made me think like, okay, so this, this is where I'm like, there, this is, a, it, this is where I got the decoy energy from. Cause it's like, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to go the route of all the way. Like maybe there are feelings between me and Raquel. I don't know. Maybe I could see that happening, but he wanted it to be a decoy. Right. Cause now everyone's talking about it. Yeah. As where Raquel is going to try to go all the way with it because she really needs to decoy it. Like she really needs people not to pay attention to it. Yeah. And so now Schwartz the next day is like, no, 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 It's, it's, he even calls it platonic. A platonic, yeah, it is platonic because you guys, like, it's like a business arrangement. It is, it's, it's a total arrangement. So it actually makes sense what he's saying. It is a platonic kiss. He, it's like an two actors kissing yeah. for, for, because it's in the script. Yeah. That is what happened for him. And that's why everyone is like, what the, like, this is not, uh, like, Schwartz, we're not all privy to know yes. that there's, a, there's a bigger story happening here. So this is weird. Your behavior is weird. The words that he's, the things that he's saying, like, I'm like an old man, you know, like Katie's like thinking she could tell me what to do. And that's not cool. And I've been all sad and stuff. And so, you know, I just wanted to feel better. It's like, huh? What are you talking about? But it makes sense if you know that this was all a decoy mixed with Sandoval convincing Schwartz to get his mojo back. Yeah. And stick it to Katie. Like, fuck you, Katie. You can't control me anymore. Katie never controlled Schwartz Sandoval. Ever. Like, Sandoval, you wanted to control Schwartz, and that's why you hated Katie. Because Katie wanted to, I don't know, have some sort of a partnership with her husband. Yeah. and then, Heaven forbid. And she also would tell her husband, her partner, when he's being manipulated by you, Sandoval. Yeah. And, and that you got don't in your like way. It. You yeah. don't like it. You didn't like that. So it's like you convinced him, like, Katie's in your head. Katie's just in your head. And so none of this makes sense to normal people who are like, so you don't like her? Like, so James isn't buying it. Right. But I like when James goes, so did making out with Raquel make you happy? By the way, James also grabs the drink right out of Allie's hands. I saw that. And chugs it. I know. I, I, I was I that was such a small detail, but I clocked it too because he was like, he was trying to put all of his energy into this drink. He was like, I'm going to pop off and I'm really trying not to right now. So let me grab this other drink. <laughs> yes. But Schwartz, in his confessional, says, I haven't felt desirable at all in the last six months. I'm sorry. What about Joe? You've been with, you've been living with someone. You've yeah. had someone attract. How much attention and affection can you possibly need? Joe probably doesn't count though. Joe doesn't count. She's just Joe. She's just like that person. Like, wow, whatever. James is like, you're probably dead to Katie right now. <laughs> and then Schwartz is go Schwartz has the nerve to go, is that even fair though? Be objective. <laughs> James is like, uh, that's my ex fiance, bro. And I love it when Schwartz goes, I, I know, man, and puts his hand on James's leg. And James is like, get off me. <laughs> get off my fucking leg. And Schwartz is like, don't be like that. And James goes, I didn't do anything, mate. I just told you to get your hand off my leg. You're the one that shoved your tongue down my ex fiance's throat at the white party. He was so like serious and together. I was like, James, if you could maintain this all the time, you'd be so hot. Yeah. But he can't. He, he can't cannot. maintain it. No, he can't maintain that. Shorts was not. Ex the thing is, Sh Shorts and Sandoval and Raquel thought they were playing with people from like in their yes. Past. Yes. James and Katie are on a new wavelength right now. And they <laughs> ain't, no, they ain't messing so up fucking true. around. Mm -mm. Nope. No. Not oh, James around. is like, I don't know. You, you're not talking to season fucking three, James, bitch. Uh -uh. Nope. Schwartz goes, come on, Allie, back me up. Um, there's just so many times I, I like literally was just <laughs> shocked by what people were saying in this episode. <laughs> Stunned. Schwartz, Schwartz is like, uh, you're not about to ask my girlfriend to back you up for making out with my ex fiance. Okay. And Schwartz is like, I was being facetious. And then this James, James wins. He goes, fuck your facetious. 
and your big words. <laughs> and then that, that – Breaks that, the ice. I love yeah, that. breaks the ice. So – I love that. Oh, what a scene. What a scene. You have to have, like, James. Like, he's such a – like, he really puts levity into the episodes for me because I'm drained. <laughs> It was intense. And Schwartz is just a sweaty monster demon. Damn. He is. He's nasty. <laughs> All right. Now let's go back to L.A. And the most inappropriate scene. They were doing so well with Lisa Vanderpump. They were utilizing her so perfectly. Yeah. Then they do this. Where she has Greg come to her house. As if she has any authority whatsoever in Schwartz and Sandy's and has the nerve to act like she can tell him, if I kick these guys in the ass, you get open by the 31st. Finally, though, I did get some information out of Greg. Finally, he explained what they, because I was like, dude, what is the problem? Finally, he said some actual problems. And then when he said those problems, I was like, oh, now I get it. Now I get what the issue is. He's the like operations guy. He's been trying to de to teach them operations and they don't listen. So here's what, the, here's what the issue is. They've given a list of drinks, but there's no bar menu. There's no bar Bible. There's no procedures. There's no training got it and that is what i've have i not been saying that i've yeah. been saying like there's no one training there's no one like knowing what to do like you can't just hand a list of cocktails but have their like there's so many things that go into putting a bar together yeah like you can't just show up one day and it's like all right guys make those cocktails because then you have a whole like then you have a whole bunch of people come in, ring in drinks, and the bar's like, we don't even know how to do this. Everything has to be inventoried. Everything has to be measured out. Like, it's there's a ton of work that goes into it, and that can take months. Yes. So. I mean, we've both been a part of openings for restaurants, really big restaurants. And I know that when I was opening a restaurant in New York for Tao, their newest one and at the time. And that's huge, by yeah. the way. Tao yeah. is a massive yeah. establishment. Was, so obviously Schwartz and Sandy's is smaller, but still. Go but on. yeah, it was, but it was their newest restaurant. It was called Vandal. It's just under the Tao umbrella. Mm. And um, yeah, I was there for probably two, at least two months of just there five days a week at least training the revisions on food like go, like I had to know all of the allergies for this we had it like it was like it was a it was crazy while they're building like we were in a shell of a restaurant like there was no real like it, it was under construction and we're just in this construction site learning their stuff and then we switched POS systems and oh. in the middle, like learning that one, and then we're not doing that one anymore. We're trying this new thing, and like and then that crashed, and then uh, like you know what I mean. And it really proved to me too that they did not have nearly enough involvement in operations at TomTom. Tom. Like they really did just show up here and there for the fun stuff. Yeah, but yet they wanted to get so much more credit. It's like the. It, I personally like the operation side of the restaurant stuff. Like that was stuff I enjoyed. It's a lot of work, but I enjoyed that because that's the part that makes it move. And they clearly don't even want to hear about it. They and just want to be creatives. Yes. And that poor GM is losing his mind because he's like, I get it, guys. I get you have like a blue shark drink that you want to <laughs> make, but I need the boring stuff. Like I need to know what glass you want it in. I need to know, like, I need the measurements. I need like the stuff that sucks that you don't want to do, but like, that's what I need in order to make it happen for you. Yeah. Cause it has to be consistent. Like it, like every time you order the blue shark drink, it comes um, in a high ball with mm -hmm. ice or, and then it is garnished. Or is it crushed ice? It's, yeah. It's or, a crushed ice. Yeah the, yeah. the specifics of like, yeah, even ice is important. Then it has to be garnished the same way. Like, yes. And every, exactly. and the drink must come out tasting the same consistently. So all the bartenders need to be making it the same okay. exact way. And that's what a bar Bible is. So every the bar Bible will have a picture of it with all the ounces, because especially for an opening, you're going to have a lot of turnover 
you're meaning like the staff is going to quit. You're going to have to hire a new staff because it's just how it is with openings. And so when you hire a new staff member, they have to be able to come on, have that bar Bible there so they can go and reference it. It's just all those things need to be in place. And so, yeah, you can't open if you don't have that training, because if you open it, it's a disaster. It's just impossible. No, you don't do that. But Lisa is like, as I'm just paraphrasing. She's basically like, but won't it be like cute and fun if they open a restaurant on camera for this season? It's like, no, Lisa, like this guy actually has like a reputation that he's trying to uphold. Like he already got into some issues when he was at, um, uh, what's the place they like to go? Uh, he, he was running, what's that place that they like to go all the time? That's on oh, the Belmont. Oceana. Yeah. The Belmont. Oh, he was running the Belmont. He had some investment with the Belmont, but it was like, so it was due to COVID. There were like some COVID issues with like not paying vendors and things. So I think someone had to like sue him for money to get the money back, but that was happening with a lot of people. So, um, but it was, it, he's fine. Like he has a good reputation, I guess. Um, so he's like, I'm not like you, Lisa. Like I don't do restaurant openings for shows. Like I actually do just like restaurant openings. Yeah. And so Lisa being like, I'm going to kick their skinny little asses until they get it done. As long as you promise me that they open on the 31st. And he's like, okay, I know you want me to say that on camera. And that was the plan for this scene. But like, I don't do like this Mickey Mouse <laughs> bullshit restaurant thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't like that. It's like, I'm not doing that. I'm not having this like, I don't know what you're doing. He's like, I don't even know why I said yes to this scene, to be honest. I just didn't want to be rude. Oh, because, I, felt, like, I felt bad for him. I did too. <laughs> Lisa, this is so out of line. She has no money invested in this. She's not his boss. She's not their boss. Like, this is awkward. I felt like he was like, I agreed to do this. Now, like, I'm going to this lady's house. I'm going to bring this rosé. It's so funny because, like, also, she has a line of rosé, so I thought that was funny. Yeah, I thought it was funny, too. I was like, did he know that? I was like, <laughs> she just looks like, at it like, here's some oh. decent rosé other than, like, yours. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't – I actually – I think I have had her rosé. I don't love it. Yeah, I have never had it. I've only heard bad things about her. Sorry, Lisa. Uh, but it is now 2.08 p.m., and Schwartz is waking Sandoval up. But, you know, that's, I guess, to be expected. They all went to bed clearly yeah. so late. How late could they have gone to bed? And what time did Sheena expect them to get up the next day for that spot? I bet that you they were, they probably went to bed at like six, seven. Oh, you know, they did. They were tripping. They were tripping. Uh, Schwartz is like making jokes. Like I had a really funny dream that I made out with Raquel. <laughs> so funny. Creeps. <laughs> <laughs> So Lala goes to Sheena's room. The, this <laughs> Lala has, I'm just amazed that Lala can say this to Sheena's face without any shame. She's like, I'm not going to dinner. No, I'm going to go off property for dinner. I just can't. I liked how she phrased it. I'm going to go off property. Off property. <laughs> I was off like, property. Okay. okay. I don't even, I'm like, I guess, okay. Like, <laughs> All right, then. She just like, so what happened last night then? And like the night before was like an event. Like that was something you should have attended. Yeah. She's like, I just don't think that there is an excuse for her not attending the all white party. And <laughs> she should have went to the after party too. Like, she's like, <laughs> like that it was, honestly looked fun. It Sorry. did. It, it did looked look fun. I, so far, all of Sheena's events look great. And I don't know yeah. what the complaints are. Like, yeah. I would like to be on a boat that I, I would like to be for. on a boat. Good point. I I want to hit a drum that has colorful water spewing Same. up. Same. Fire breathers. Same. And that after party looked fucking fun. As James would say, there's fire dances in a fountain. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. That after party looked a lot like, looked yeah. like a lot of fun. They were wasted. I mean, I know, I know Lala doesn't drink, but still. Also, Lala, get some intel. Like Lala, get in there and like hear what they're saying. Like that—that that would be good. She would have killed the vibe though, for sure, with her mood. Oh yeah. But Lala, like, so she asked, like, so what happened last night then? And Lala goes, "My life is very intense right now, and I want to surround myself with women that want to rally around and support each other." Raquel reminds me of the girls who would go and be with Randall. The dirtiness of it. And Sheena goes, "I don't think so." <laughs> I'm like, oh. 
oh, this didn't age well. This just didn't age I, well. Listen, I if I'm sure Sheena right now is like, I'm not really looking forward to the rest of this season. She <laughs> knows what the fuck she said. <laughs> She does. And she's like, she's I know she is like she is it. not looking forward to the oh rest of the God. season. She because the thing is, bless her heart. She oh, she said bless her heart. We know what that means. We know what she, that means. When she rides for someone, she rides hard. She does. She rides blindly. Mm-hmm. Blind. And she got played. Like now it really makes sense why she's so pissed. Because yes. watching this, I'm like, ooh, ooh, she said that too. Ooh. Because there were all these more. And then here's the problem, too. Maybe Lala's saying it nicer off camera, but Lala says it like so aggressive and so like unapologetically that it's like, okay, that is her friend. So maybe if she, maybe if she was a little bit gentler about it, but not, that's just not Lala's style. So Lala's like, no one can convince me otherwise. I like Lala's that she did feeling put good. She is feeling good. She looked good too. Um, she, um, she was putting her foot down in that conversation. She was like, we can cut it short here. You can say zero things to me that will change my <laughs> perception of Raquel. <laughs> Period. You can be friends with her, but no, I don't like her. I don't like what she stands for, and that won't change. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I am I respect too that Lala, knowing Sheena is involved in the Schwartz Raquel, like pro Schwartz Raquel team. And she, she's like, she starts crying. She's like, it takes me back to a place feeling so disrespected. I feel for her, meaning Katie, so much. And Sheena has no sympathy. She just like stares at Lala. She's like, it's not her vacation. It's my wedding. <laughs> oh. Girl, you are lucky that by now you're doing damage control. Because yeah. if you weren't already doing damage control, this you would be the villain sheena you would she, be the villain she would have been a she if this didn't come out this is actually this is a blessing in disguise for a lot of people um if mm-hmm. this did not come out sheena would for sure i mean she would still have her sheena people that are riding for her no matter what yeah but this because katie's would, a tough sell yeah she really is um we were it was just a yeah But she, this, she did it, she did, she handled this whole thing correctly. Like once this came out, instead of trying to come up with some type of excuse for her, like she kind of just owned it and she did her apology tour. And that is just what you do. Like I misread the situation. I contributed to the situation and I am sorry. Yes. Yes. And that was perfect. That's all we needed. Yep. Yep. Forgiven. I, we're still gonna have to talk about it, Sheena, because it is airing. But but forgiven. Forgiven. <laughs> Lala savagely goes, "This is where you're getting it twisted. Everyone has other things going on outside <laughs> of your wedding." <laughs> like how, I just don't like. How do you do that? Like I like I get it, and she's not wrong. But like. It's her wedding. wedding. Trip. That's why you're there. Yeah, like it's her wedding. Like I don't think that Sheena's being unreasonable to no. ask for three days because no. we all flew here That's for her wedding. That's why you're in Mexico. Like it's, I I think it would be unreasonable maybe if they were back in LA. Yes, yes. If they were in LA, fine. Like that. Like I could. It, it would be easier for you to not have to, like, you know what I mean? But you're like, sorry, at a resort, we're like walking past each other. Like, you're just not going to go to my white party. You're just going to watch me from afar. A it's so bad. It's so you're gonna watch. So you're going to, you're going to have the audacity to wear white and not come wear to white. the white party. Let's talk about that. <laughs> you're in white right outside of the like white people party. people from the white party came over and said hi. Like you couldn't have hopped over yes. and just said a quick hello. Hey, how you doing? You didn't even come say hi to me. I know Lala won the poll on Watch What she Happens did. Live. But I think I was, they were confused about what they were voting on. I do too. And I also think that people are not, they're they're still hurt by the, like now that we know, like I think that Sheena doesn't look good in the episode with like what she's doing with the Ra- Raquel thing. So I think yeah. people are voting on emotions. Yes. But on a, te- but technically here comes Lala. Your wedding is the most important thing to you. 
it's not the most important thing to everyone here. We all have shit going on. But no. Yes, I will be there supporting you tomorrow. Okay? Yeah. And this is where I have a hard time with Lala. <laughs> <laughs> she just stares at her. She's like, I need to get ready. I'm like, girl, you are being like, she's being very, very calm considering. Yeah. And I get, I think it is the best thing that she just doesn't even like, nope, this, don't this fight. is not a conversation that's not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And she needs to save her energy and like, let's make this a positive, like no yep. arguing. Like yep. if she doesn't want to come to your events, just like let her fucking do her thing and have the conversation with her in LA. Yes. Yes. Because no, don't ruin your vibe, your energy. No. Lala's not even done though. She's like, imagine separating and then someone hooking your ex up with someone in the friend group. Yeah, she was not. She was like, I need you to know that this is fucked up. Yeah. And Sheena's like, we're going to agree to disagree on it. <laughs> I know. She's like, you're not about to like make me a villain Bye-bye. on my wedding weekend. You're not about okay. to make me a villain uh-huh. on my wedding weekend. Get we can out. talk about that after Get my out. wedding weekend. Bye-bye. We're gonna like, just... And we're done. Scene's done. Okay, leave. Scene then, is done. Then Lisa calls the Toms. And I, again, I'm like, producers, you're misusing Lisa because Lisa's like, guys, I know that I have nothing in at all involved in Schwartz and Sandy's, but I, I just, I spoke with Greg. He came over, he came over and um, you're not going to be open. This is not from me. This is from him. You're not going to be open on the 31st. You apparently didn't provide the bar menu. That's so- <laughs> it's kind of the- funny how she did that though. <laughs> yeah. They're but then now they're like, uh, yeah, we did three days ago. You look dumb. You guys look fucking dumb. This is your own. You're the owner. You want to open? See, you weren't ready to open up a fucking. You're not serious enough to do this. You guys, you should. You should be like. You should not be there. You should be there for one day. You should be there for the wedding, and then you should go right back. Okay, this like this is a mess. But how, but how could Santa Fall have his fun? If How could that. he have his fun? And then she's like, okay, I've got to go. Have fun. Okay, bye. Get out of there. Get out of there. All right. At dinner, I got to say, Tom and Ariana look rough. Like, they look the roughest of everyone. Like, Tom is barely able to lift his head up. Like, he's like, what What time? Like, we were just going to eat and leave, right? Because I got to go back to bed. Oh, yeah. Ariana looks rough, too. Like, they're like, we got one hour of sleep. Uh, it's one of those like hibachi chef cooks your food things. Everyone's like sitting right next to each other. But meanwhile, Katie, Christina and Lala are just like have a little drink in the lobby thing, which is like yeah. right outside of that restaurant. The seating is James Schwartz and Raquel. Okay. <laughs> Schwartz jokes. He's like, I he's talking to Raquel. He's like, I have to talk to Katie, you know, like I have to, and she's like, I mean, I think I'm in more trouble than you are. And then he thinks it's he's funny. It's like, man, we're so like rock and roll anti-establishment. And they're like, yeah, we're rock and roll. No, no, we're not. But here comes James. Here comes James. He goes, So you made it with Peter, Schwartz, and you know, Tom, and like, you know, who else are you gonna make out with in our friend group? <gasps> for t- I mean, just like these lines, these lines that just gave me chills. It's just like makes me scream in my brain. My brain is like screaming. Raquel's like, I'm just trying to live a little. I want to, I want to strangle her. I want to strangle her. James saying, I think you're a bit lost. Yeah. Yep. Y- yeah. Yep. That's yep. an understatement. Understatement. And then he's feeling like there's chemistry between them. So he's like, there's obviously chemistry between you two, just admit it. And it's interesting to see Schwartz denounce that completely. He's like, no, I mean, I would man up if there was, but there's not. And Raquel's like, "Uh, no, that's not the storyline. We have to really sell this. We have to real, she's like, it's been very flirty. And so here she is in the confessional acting like she's brokenhearted over him downplaying it, minimizing it. I would love to know when she filmed this confessional. I, but the thing is, you know what I took that confessional as? Her just feeling like she lost, like not in oh, the sense she's of so competitive. Yeah, like I don't think that she actually cares about Schwartz. Like she's that's a facade that she's putting up. But it's about like, hey, no, we're getting back at Katie, and you're kind of rejecting me and kind of making it seem like I'm a loser. Like you just kissed Ooh. me, like like you just kissed me. 
and then that's it high five like I don't ever like I like we have no chemistry like it kind of I feel like she feels like you've made me look bad like in this process you weren't supposed to make me look rejected like in this process I was supposed to look like everyone wants me yeah Ooh, she's like that wasn't part of the plan yeah she's not liking that and I think that's why she she's quickly pivoting because she's like okay well if he's not going to be on board with this (laughs) wow like I'm not going to be the one to be rejected so now like she's has to like somehow reject him it's weird yes I get what you're saying James is like, well, you know, it's jarring to see you making out with all these people after we were together for so long. And she does get to flip it and be like, well, it's weird to see you in a relationship after three weeks. Again, her villain origin story was clearly, you know, the whole James thing. Yeah. Uh, well, that could be argued. But yeah, now I, I thought yeah, it now was. Now I'm like, hold I'm on. Ti- hit her, they're so, they're such liars that the timeline, like, I wouldn't even be surprised if this flirt, flirtatious emotional cheating happened while... Or cause or to, the, yeah. the initial or breakup. the initial breakup. I agree. Um, James, though, immediately jumps into, I've never been more in love with someone. And I was never in love with you. Thank God we never got married. Okay, James. That immediately was- goes. Immediately he goes to like the most vicious place. That's yeah. his, that's his, um, that's his tactic though. Like James, yeah. James protects himself with the most venomous words. Because he was so poor. These are not excuses, by the way, for what James does at all. But it's just so obvious why James does it. Like yeah. it's textbook. He was bullied horribly as a child. He's talked about it before. That these are look at the way his parents are. Yeah, he was not taught healthy emotional control. Yeah, and like communication skills. And so. I feel like he, because of his parents' dynamic. He thinks like once you break up with someone, that's how you treat <laughs> treat like you know what I mean. Like you can't mm-hmm. it can't be positive. Like when him like he was so in love with Kristen, and you wouldn't even remember that. Like it's they're so vicious to each other. Yeah. You wouldn't even remember a time that he was following her around like a little puppy dog. Good point. You know what yeah. I mean. As soon as that happy happened, like she cut it off or whatever happened, she, he goes to her her house, spits on her door, like and it's just viciousness after that. Yeah. Yeah, spits on her door. Allie excuses herself once again when it gets a little hot in the kitchen. She's like, I'm going to go say goodbye to Lala and Christina. It's interesting she doesn't say Katie. Um, her confessional, she go, She might just not give good confessional, which is possible because she's so new to this. But she's like, I'm just ready for any trauma around Raquel to be over. You know, I'm just bored. I'm like, okay, girl, you got with a man who just broke up with someone. So yeah. You know, you kind of you put yourself in that. Pit. Yeah, you, you you put yourself in this situation, sweetheart. So like, yeah, buckle like, up, honey. Buckle up, bitch. All right, let's do this. James, but like, okay, so she's out there talking to talking to the three of them, and James because they're like finishing up at the hibachi place, and they're like vacating. It's like it's like a it's like a zombies like leaving the place because like out comes Tom, Tom Sandoval, and then out comes like Schwartz, and I'm like, get out, Katie, run. <laughs> Katie bolted. She said, not today. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she was right because of course Schwartz sees her and is like, Katie, hi. It's like no, you absolute piece of shit. She meant what she said. He's so used to tequila katie just rage texting and not really like meaning it she's like no no i mean it i'm done with you like yeah done 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 yeah uh but james brings out ali's plate of food <laughs> he's like you didn't eat your food but uh so lala intervenes and is like no shorts no and he's like well it's just like a silly thing oh okay cool 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 you intentionally, vengefully kissing someone because she said not got it. Cool. Yeah, you're right. Fuck her feelings. Just silly. So funny. Schwartz is really fucking getting me this episode. I'm like, the things that he is just saying to our faces, like, what, like, on what planet do you think any of this is okay, Schwartz? I, I, I on actually, what like, planet? The last, the last scene with him when he comes in and is and the hibachi restaurant with them was like he looked i'll get to it i'll get to it um girls night though i didn't like james and Allie. was it always the plan that they were going to join katie christina and lala i don't think so i okay. think that i think that that 
they went to say hi and I think it was actually the catalyst of James bringing out Allie's plate like you didn't eat your plate and then like we're going to a restaurant do you want to just go because it made sense loving Katie and and uh um James having a having yeah a vibe especially is yeah especially since I mean I knew that they like even before that this whole thing happened with the Raquel and the Schwartz and all that stuff they were they were on friendly terms I like them being friendly because they both can like cut you yeah and they're it's, savage they're quick <laughs> yeah I feel like they they thrive when they're around people that can keep up Yes. And like Lala is a good connection between the two. Yeah. So like I, it, it all makes sense now. Yeah. Uh, so James is like, oh yeah, that quadruple date was ridiculous. And Katie's like, oh, so Schwartz and Raquel are dating. And the way she gets into that sad, like the delivery of the line that we've seen was just as good. I want to light them both on fucking fire. And it gives it gives James and Lala like life. Yeah. Like, oh yes, yeah. James is like, why haven't we been friends this whole time? Yes, yes Katie. He's like, that's right. Yes, we do. Light him on fire. We have a common enemy now. Let's go. Let's do this. And she's like, what he did crossed every fucking line. There's no coming back from this. And this was a powerful monologue. She's like, I've sat them both down, tears in my eyes. Please, guys, one fucking request. You drunk fucking imbeciles Im- imbeciles is not a word so commonly used but when it's used properly <laughs> it's good yeah well done. well yeah done they switch over it's lala starts talking about the dawn and and she jokes she's, she's like yeah that you know he's got me discombobulated and katie just makes a silly joke she's like he's got her dicks combobulated and james <laughs> loves james james is loving katie yeah james is like where have you been this whole he's time like, why was i hanging out with schwartz and sandoval like this was the girl <laughs> i should have been like this she's hilarious he's like i actually hate those guys yeah. you're great that's <laughs> so true uh sheena is in the room with the girls and it turns out she has been married to brock for a year i thought that was kind of sweet it was very sweet because sheena is such like an attention whore and so for her to do something subtle and and just personal and intimate was like okay okay now that actually means something like none of them like knew like Mm -hmm. not even ariana i was like they that that felt like made it so special it's like it was just she knows she can't help but tell people stuff too like so for her to keep a secret for that long yep i was like a year yeah which makes me i don't know if you plan on talking about this later but like the rumors about brock and raquel i can't have it Mm -mm. and it cannot be real lala's her she said she doesn't buy it okay I, i i can't have that be real yeah i like she says that lala said she's like nope not not taking it, not going for it. Um, no, like I, that's just no, no, no. Someone on the Patreon asked if I could do a deep dive into it, and I said I'm not touching it. I don't. I you don't want to give it those, life. Those sorts of those sorts of holes are really dark to go down, and I'm just not that kind of um, content creator. I don't yeah. like. I don't. I don't want to be the one to uncover it because then I got to It's just, you don't want to. You don't want to do it. And if someone I, else uncovers it, I'll report on it, but I don't want to. Yeah, it's just like there's just so much, I don't know, especially watching as we get through towards uh, Sheena's wedding. It's just like, I don't, as much as, yeah, like she wasn't the nicest or empathetic at, in, the, at, in the moment with Katie. I, I don't want, I don't think that an eye for an eye, like I don't want that to be, no, nope. no, nope, nope, nope. Brock comes in so that the girls, they can, they can leave. But before that, Raquel's like, okay, yeah, I don't want to walk with Schwartz anymore. And and that's what I'm talking about. She's like, well, I got to reject his ass too. Yeah, we were like noted. She's like, he basically isn't playing the game right, so fuck him. And then we'll see how later. She's like, I hope you don't mind that I said I didn't want to walk with you. And he's like, okay, bye bye. <laughs> all right, day of the wedding. I all I can all I cared about was figuring out when it was that Sandoval and Raquel were missing. Yes. I don't know why I like I got caught up in Sheena's moment and I kind of forgot myself so I could see how they could have all. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's, 100, it's so easy to do because, again, it, what a cover up. 
Yeah. They all figured like, we're like, of course we got, like, we got sidetracked. There's enough going on. And they fit and they used that. That's what's so sick. They're what's sick. What's interesting is that they really, and I know they have to have footage of it. They really didn't give us much of the prep for her. Like, you know how like in her they first wedding, right? In her first wedding, we got so much of the BTS of the lead yeah. up to her walking out. It's like they almost like. And you know why? Probably because there was drama. Yeah. You know, Kristen had Kristen had to be there and there was drama with Ariana and Kristen. There was like no drama. So they're like, oh, we got a show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sandoval is like Raquel is there and Sandoval is with Brock. So I'm like, all right. So it must have been before cameras were up that they were like not present. Mm hmm. Um, Gina's dress is the perfect graduation from her crop top dress. It's like it, it's see through, it's a sheer, you know, so it's like it's the perfect step. It's like it well done, Gina. I thought well she done. looked breathtaking. I thought she looked great. I loved, I loved, I loved the dress. I love the dress. Yeah. Looks perfect on her. Katie and Christina are in the room and the wedding starts, and Christina's the one who encourages Katie to go look out, um, which was good because then Katie can't get blamed for like peeking. Summer Moon is so fucking cute. Oh my God. No, she's she, like, I, that. she looks like baby. Um, baby Moo it, from Monsters, Inc. Yes, baby. That was who, that's, thank you, baby. I almost said Moana, but I was like, no, it's not Moana. It's baby yeah. Boo. She's so freaking adorable. Yeah. Cutest baby. Sheena walking, though, it's like, the fact that we have this footage the shot of katie and christina watching the wedding from a balcony overlooking down like but still touched by it is kind of iconic yeah like they're not watching like ew they're watching like oh that actually makes you kind of want to cry yeah. it's it's pretty it's it's a very like it was a touching moment it was a like, grown-up grown up version of what happened at sheena's first wed wedding when uh christina kelly and stassi are just like looking on instagram for updates and just shred tearing her to shreds yeah you're right like oh that was so true like it was because everyone obviously down there is going to be like oh but then it's like they cut they cut up there and they weren't like ew they were just like oh okay we can we can admit that's great the whole thing was sheena's veil yeah it was cute because she was like it's okay it's okay it's okay and then they cut to her being like at my first wedding i was freaking out about every little detail that I didn't enjoy myself and because we just recapped it it was, it was funny to remember like she was she, but yeah. it, honestly it was justified it was justified <laughs> it was justified we, we support her because she, that wedding coordinator didn't coordinate shit yeah so but, far um, everything has been breathtaking I hope yes. that coordinator is watching this is what she yeah. wanted the first time around damn it yeah. <laughs> it is a beautiful beautiful wedding um sheena's confessional it's not about all these details she has a real bad vocal fry it's about the person and i found my person uh sheena's vows were cute though she goes you're my best friend and yes i know i have a lot of those that I'm was like, funny okay, well that done. was funny i well like that I, a good speech oh you always gotta poke fun at yourself a little bit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really funny too that Jackson, Kristen, and Brittany are there, and there's just no side of them. Not a, yeah. not even a little tiny glimpse. Nothing. They are nowhere on camera. I mean, I know Jack said in one of the many interviews he's had since this has broken um, that they just they they were asked if they would like to be filmed, and they declined. I don't know if I believe that, I don't but believe that. Um, that's what he said. Okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, after they kiss, everyone cheers, and it's sad because Katie and Christina just like go inside. Like, oh, I felt bad, but Christina's like, okay, I only have one outfit to wear, and it's a fucking white dress. I'm like, Christina, you knew this was a wedding weekend. <laughs> but at the reception, um, Raquel pulls Schwartz aside to talk about, like, you know, talking to Katie or whatever, and it is awkward. Cause he's like, all right, well, it was nice making out with you. And Raquel's like, wait, this wasn't like in the plan. I, I, the plan was clearly to like maintain that these two were possibly a thing. Yeah. Like that was the plan. Right. Right. Or 
am I am I wrong? And Schwartz really did want to just stick it to Katie and was like, because Sandoval admits that he was encouraging Schwartz for a while. He admitted in the Howie Mandel interview that he was like, I was trying to get Schwartz, you know, like, is it Raquel great? She's amazing. Oh, and Schwartz was like, no, no, I'm not into it. And then finally at the wedding, he's like, all right, fine. Fuck you guys. And Sandoval was clearly pushing him to do it. And then after he kissed Raquel, he was like, oh, it was just really nothing there. Like no chemistry. So I don't know. I'm, I'm going back and forth. Me because, too. Because they're so, both the Toms are so close. I can see Sandoval immediately telling Schwartz that they had sex after boys night, but then, so like, this is, this is my thing I always say with them. They say parts of the truth and then like, it's all spliced up so you can't keep track. So this is what I'm, my working theory is Sandoval told Schwartz right away because he knows that Schwartz will never judge him for that. It's been proven time and time Mm -hmm. again, but did downplay how he felt like it was just like a hook we hooked up and like I don't think he was like being the magnetic stuff like he is now I think he was just like yeah we had sex it was great probably boast about it but then it was like but you know it was just you know it was a one-time thing like whatever we were drinking the and he was like but you should go after her like she's hot like yeah they, I don't think that they care about sharing does that make sense oh and but I think though that probably knowing that information first I like uh, Schwartz, that, yeah like kind that's what kind of got him turned off from the Raquel thing and but Sandoval's still pushing it and then he did want to spite Katie and that's where I feel like all the disconnect happened I like that I do I like that theory because uh Raquel could be like who cares I already like got with Sandoval like yeah so and he's like no I'm good yeah okay that that kind of ties it all in and then Raquel's confessional is like the way he's playing it off makes me curious to think why he was down to make out to begin with. <laughs> Bitch, what are you do? You're this is sadistic. Yeah. What did you like? You know why you did? Like you weren't, or was she genuinely, genuinely planning on having a relationship with Schwartz just to be close to Tom? I think that I she could was, see that happening. I could, I could as well. I think that she was like, she wasn't sure if Tom was ever going Could've to break up with Ariana. Ariana. Yeah. yeah. And he, she's like, whatever, Schwartz is hot. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I can play with the idea if you're not going to like leave your, your girl. Yeah. I think that it, her plan worked in a, some way because I think it did make him start really pursuing her. Mm-hmm. more than he had in the like I think that they were it having, really like, agreed you know like it accelerated it so I think her plan did ultimately work because look at his behavior at the um after party of the all-white party yep ew all right so then the bridal party like makes their entrance and it's crazy just Raquel and Ariana are like totally friends and you know what happened or like Raquel and Tom before the wedding like had a rendezvous it's wild yeah. And how is Tom able, like, it's just so crazy that we are watching this knowing that that happened. Yeah. Tom sitting and next I, to Ariana watching their first dance, watching Sheena and Brock have their first dance. And I guarantee, I don't think that maybe Sandoval told Schwartz in Mexico that that happened, but I guarantee Schwartz probably had a feeling that was what was going on and why he wasn't where he was supposed to be. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. he, they were missing they're yeah. both they're both in the wedding he probably and that's probably why also acting weird with Raquel later in the reception too it's like he's probably like this is getting messy <laughs> right uh okay so Katie and Christina are at the hibachi place and Lala hasn't texted them yet so they're like oh she must be having fun and Christina's like, if you knew how this trip was going to go, would you have come? And Katie's like, hard no, definitely not. And in walks Schwartz. This was so triggering to see Schwartz like this. Katie, Christina's like, how'd you even know where we were? And Schwartz, so he's like, I was creeping around a little bit, meaning production told me. And Schwartz is like, I didn't mean to interrupt. And then eats a piece of their sushi. 
then looks at Katie and says, what? And Schwartz said, I just didn't want there to be any weird tension. Yet he has no intention of honoring her feelings, but he just wants to simply grace her with his presence. Like that'll do the trick. Like if I just like show up here, that'll do the trick, right? Like here I am. And she goes, I think we're way past that. Yeah. And he goes, how far past? And she says, the point of no return. The look on this man's face with the fogged up glasses that are kind of like down on his face, glazed over eyes and the look of knowing he's wrong, but saying it anyway, just to rile her up in order to make her look crazy. This is exactly how my ex would look. It's like a black, like it was almost like I could put a side by side up. It's the, it's black. It's almost a blackout drunk, but it's the kind of drunk that they always get. It's like, this is the drunks that shorts get. He's a dark drunk now. Yeah. And he goes, we've been divorced seven months. It doesn't matter if I make out with someone. Thank God Christina is there. Cause if it's just Katie saying it, he won't listen. Yeah. But Christina's like, you know what this is about. Like, you know what this is. And Katie reminds him that he promised her that he would not do that. And then you did it in the most humiliating and public way towards me. I'm done with you disrespecting me. Yes, Katie. Oh, when she said that. Yes, Katie. The chills that went up my butt. Because it was like, it wasn't, it was just so like, it's kind of like how Ariana was in the, in the mid-season trailer when it's just like, you just, when it's a person's just done, like just done, like absolutely. Like she meant that, like done we're like it's like this is what i needed to know that i'm done and schwartz has a smile on his face and i was like i didn't realize everyone was watching and christina is like bullshit you knew all your friends were there and then schwartz keeps thinking it's funny he's like i was caught up in a moment you were a wasted blacked out asshole and katie's like what moment and he's like he just shrugs like the prick that he is he's like a moment He knows what he's doing and he knows he's slowly antagonizing a reaction out of her to make her look crazy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And she goes, I hope it was worth it. We're done. No friendship, no amicability. I've never had hatred for you. And now I do. And he goes, that sucks for you. It's cool. When he said that, I really wanted to go through that TV and smack him. Like that was not the response that you give someone who is trying to tell you how deeply you've hurt them. It's cruel. It's cruel. They've been, they've been being cruel to Katie Sandoval, Raquel and Schwartz this entire season. And sorry, Sheena, Sheena. Sheena. Katie's confessional is perfect. She goes, I have zero desire to talk to this shell of a man that I used to love because he is a shell of a man he's lost himself he's got he's got a substance abuse problem like the man is not okay yeah and then schwartz goes it sucks that and now he's in now he's in that i could just see the fights that they've had before so many times where he starts to trigger her intentionally it sucks that you hold on to so much toxicity and negativity and Katie says, Tom, I thought you actually genuinely cared about me and my feelings and keeping this amicable. And Schwartz says the feelings have been exhausting. I'm not going to lie. Oh, God. He just like says like the like the craziest things to me in this episode. Like. He's such a dick. It's just wild. And he says it like. It's no big deal. Like, yeah, whatever. and then we're going to still be best friends after I just said all this really hurtful things to you. Like, What? And that's why it's like Katie gets this bad rap, but like, this is a horrible person. Schwartz is a horrible partner. Like, this is a fucked up thing to say to someone. She says, get the fuck out of my face. I think you're pathetic. I think you're a drunk and I think you're a loser. He goes, this does not affect me at all because I don't give a fuck anymore. I love you, but I am disconnected from you. Get the fuck out of here then. You came in here. Yeah, like I didn't She already ask. told you. Get she out said, of my face. She was, not, she was not interested in having a follow-up conversation no. about why she hates you. You came, no. ate her piece of sushi. Yeah. You need to pay for that meal because yep. you ruined it. <laughs> you need to pay it's for It's all that inclusive. Meal. They're not paying for anything. They've already paid, so it's fine. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> And then Schwartz has the eyes again. He has, I call them the shark eyes because that's like how they looked. They looked like evil shark eyes. 
he goes, you know what you need? Humility. And you don't know what that is. He looks like I've, I bet this is the look he used to get all the time with her uh, alone privately. Yes. And she had mm. to like, and, and I, I, this is the look that just feels so familiar because when they get that look, you have to just shut down. There's no arguing with it. Yeah. You have to just take it and be quiet and they just keep going and they keep going. And if you say anything, it's see, look at you, see, look at you. You're always the bad guy because when you're also the angry person and you've had us and you've had years of being angry, they can always remind you of it, but they're, they're secretly the ones who antagonize the abuse it's it's really fucked up. It's I really was, fucked up. I was telling that to Sean because he was kind of watching the episode with me and it was at right after he kind of tuned out after the Raquel and Schwartz case. He was like, Well, I mean, he does seem lighter. I'm like, no, Sean, I know. But the thing is he's not looking at it at, at the broad context. He's looking at it from the old remembering seeing Katie over the years be like whatever. And he's not coming with the journey with us every mm-hmm. ep- episode to see her growth. And I'm like, you're wrong. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, yeah, he's wrong. I was like, we were fooled. And the thing is, you said that, and he said the same thing about Schwartz. He's like, he's like, pretends to be, I'm like, but that's it. Like, you need to hold on to that and hold on to that. He's been doing <laughs> that to her, that woman and making her look crazy this whole time. And we bought yeah. into that shit. You got to let go of the old narrative mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. Sh- Schwartz is being, uh, Katie is bullying Schwartz. It's the other way around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. We were all fooled for a while. Mm-hmm. Christina is like, all right, you should go. And as he's stumbling out, he goes, <laughs> you don't know what humility is. And then he stumbles out, like you said, like all crazy. And then he like, sh- like shakes his hand at somebody, probably at a producer. Like, I tried. It's like, no one asked you to. Fucker. He's, <laughs> he's losing it. He's horrible. But then Schwartz goes up to Ariana and Peter at the wedding. And he's like, you guys are so happy right now. I want to be happy. And even Peter's like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> You seem the terrifying. only screen time Peter has had like at this yeah. wedding. Yeah. Uh, but then Raquel pulls Lala aside. This was amazing. She's she's bold. She's bold. She's feel she must have had a couple of drinks because I don't know if I would want to do that. She's like, I fell bad for what I said at the pool party and like the whole mistress bimbo thing. And Lala kind of re- revises history. She's like, yeah, I'm confused. I thought we had a really fun trip in Vegas. We had she a great did. moment in the car. I'm like, don't you remember the dinner? <laughs> what are you talking but about? But remember, we have to operate on, I. She they, they don't know that she heard them talking. That's when they were talking the real shit, when the, with the lights yeah. and stuff. They don't know that. Yes, <laughs> yes. But and to be honest, even though to say to her face, like, I would not trust you drinking around my man. I'm yeah. Like, All right. That's still pretty bad. No. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. One, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, it was weird because the audio went very, I noticed it was so crazy. The audio sounded like Lala was screaming over loud, t- like loud background noise. And then it very quickly shifts to it sounding like we were like this, like talking in a very close room. So I was like, I don't know how they did that. But Raquel... <laughs> Ra- Raquel is like, that's not how I remember it. And Lala goes, I don't think you remember Vegas right. No one was judging you. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. And Raquel says she didn't get the feeling that they were laughing with her. And Lala's like, well, I would like to remind you, you were all over the place. But again, no one was judging you. <laughs> yeah, like you just judged. That was a judge and, judgy mm-hmm. moment in yeah, like that all, sentence. All of it was. all Exactly. Like you said that. Okay. Anyway, Raquel with the rehearsed confessional again though she goes i don't know if lala has a bad memory or if she thinks this mean girl behavior is normal but this gaslighting thing is exhausting give me one fucking confessional without having it sound like you literally are reading it off a teleprompter yeah it's I don't, bad I, i'm trying to like really think of all, her time so far in vanderpump I can't think of a really authentic conversation, to me, feeling like a really authentic conversation she's had with anybody, including like Sheena. Like it's all very, yeah. like she's always kind of knows how it's going to go. She's never really trying to go off script. Yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. Very I controlled. Don't know. It's, yeah. It's, everything is very controlled. And I get that's her pageant background. Like that's mm-hmm. the part of. They're training. They have to really think about everything they're going to say and how they're going to say it. So mm-hmm. I, I, she's, I think it's really hard for her to break that. 
Mm -hmm. in real life. Then Raquel hits her with, it seems like you guys need to take up a hobby if all you can do is talk about me. (laughs) What the? Lala's like, a hobby, bitch? Okay. Uh, No, I'm what I'm upset about is how you've hurt my friend and that it's gross and disgusting and you need to find yourself elsewhere. I'm like, Raquel, you really need to stop going up against Lala. You are not prepared. You do not have the right ammunition. You do not have enough things memorized to do it right. Okay. Yeah. Seriously though, girl. And she doesn't like talk fast enough for it to land. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And Raquel's like, okay, I can take accountability for making out with Schwartz. I feel like there are probably a million other things that I could have done that would be a lot worse. I I couldn't believe she said that line. I'm like, oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are you talking about what you just did this afternoon, you fucking bitch? Sorry. Yeah. This is my, that was my first and only bitch of the day, guys. Yeah. You have to let me have one. <laughs> Lala. And then Lala, I think that your self-worth comes from approval of a man, which is very sad to me. I think you're about to have a mental breakdown coming. I think you're going to Is she a freaking like. A psychic? I know. I'm sorry. But that was so eerily spot on that I was like, I need to just, do I need to just like start talking to Lala, get like life advice? Because this bitch is like, and she's, Lala is claiming that she had, she was like one of the first people to have this like feeling, like strong feeling and even warned people. So I'm like, hmm. Mm. But you know what? It makes sense though that everybody was just like thinking Lala's just being a hater because she's because the one that she's hates. always she, yeah. She hates Raquel so much that yeah. I I could see people being like, "You just want to say that so everybody hates her," and dismissing what she's saying because of their history. Mm-hmm. Exactly. She was a wrong. She's always a wrong person to deliver the message. Yeah, she of, needs she needs to start having like other. She needs to like deliver it through different people. Yeah. She needs to be like, no one's going to believe me. So can you say it? Yeah. And like, who could she have say it? Now I'm realizing that no one else would be believed either, though. The only person that would be believed would be Ariana. But she's oh, one that happened Ariana, to. Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. So we're fucked. <laughs> yeah. We're fucked. Lala savagely vacates, though. She's like, have a good night. And Raquel's like, eh. I'm like, nope loser you're a loser who should have never done this to yourself don't pull lala aside anymore i know you keep thinking you can have these moments but you can't okay she literally she <sighs> she must practice and say and then she's like ready I yeah can do she, this. she went to the bathroom she's like how about this lala okay i got it. you need a hobby you better go get okay i got it i got it yeah she's like ready to go lala. um i'm also wondering if her need to pull Lala aside is coming from the fact that she just, at least if we know for sure, definitely had sex with Sandoval just hours earlier, and which would then make her a mistress. So she's like, mm-hmm. I've been thinking about it, and I'm a mistress now. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry I called you one. <laughs> yeah, right? She's like, mm, I think that I was a little harsh. Also, I had already, when I called you one, I was one at that point too. Right. And the thing is, because now, again, Tom is trying to fudge it. So or is that what you it, said? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I still think that they had sex. Because I do. Too. For sure. But like, she was a mistress when she said it. But I feel like now she's like, maybe, maybe she no, thought like, at that I'm time. Definitely. Was. Yeah. Like, it was like, no, I'm not a mistress. Like, we had like a thing. Now I'm a full blown mistress. I just did no, it again. Yeah, a full blown. I'm a full blown mistress now, blown. and I'm 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 owning it now. And I think it's hot. Yeah, like I'm. I want to just apologize because being a mistress is cool. Being a mistress like, is super sexy. I'm really into it, so I get it now. I get why you did it. <laughs> Katie and Christina go to that bar that everyone was at like the night before, or the night or the first night they were there, and it's dead. It's like one of those sad hotel bars that's basically closed. Like, yes like, it's just like them and but katie is like now that schwartz is out of my life i the healing process can speed up and she's like i've been hanging out with this cute boy who's 25 which makes me a puma and she rightfully says how come we don't have these types of words for men and i that's a great point because men don't have to be labeled things just because they date younger yeah um 
I'm going to say that I don't love the hair on her guy. Okay. I'm okay. I wasn't sure if we were going to go there. I wasn't sure if we were going to go there. It's the, like, if we just give him a different hairstyle, I bet he's cute. I don't know. He kind of gives me the, like, that one guy on He looks SNL. like Josh Groban. Oh, okay. That was a nicer one that I was going with. Who are you going to say? Who's the guy on SNL? I might not even know who it is. I don't know his freaking name. I'll send you a picture later, but okay. that's who he reminds me of. Sorry, no shade, but. Yeah. Um, I was just, like, for, I was excited when Katie was like, I'm going to start bringing people around as she should, because she was trying to be, like, respectful and stuff like that. I just wanted the first person to be To be like, more of a flex. Yeah. Be more of an intimidating And I'm flex. sure this guy, this guy is I, – I only saw him for a couple seconds of the preview. I'm sure he's cute. I do not like the hair. Um, and also, I don't give a fuck. Like, let her – like, she is that, – that man – that young man is probably laying it down in the sack for her. Mm-hmm. So yeah, who cares? Yeah, Schwartz. Um, we also are going to see next week that Brett, their GM is going to say to the Toms that he has to fire the kitchen manager. And they're God. like, we need to get open. Do you realize how bad we need to get open? Yes. We were gone out of town for a while and, you know, didn't actually give you a drink menu. That's possible, but yeah, fuck you. We'll serve potato chips. What? <laughs> like, I, Honestly, they should be open by now, but it's their own fault. It's like okay. they were not proactive. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, I can't. And then we're <laughs> gonna see the Oliver drama play out. I was really hoping that I forgot that they was gonna be coming back again. I don't know why because I, I obviously uh, Garcelle uh, filmed. Damn it! I don't like this for Garcelle. I feel Me? like I was I was just talking to my cousin about this and I was like, Garcelle has got to get Oliver under control. She is he's embarrassing her. I I you know I love and I was right. And I knew I was not excited about Oliver being on the show. And people you were, were like right. I and I was like, I knew it because he I could tell he looked thirsty for the cameras. And he he's he he's he's a liability at this liability point for Garcelle in the upcoming season and I need I need this part of Vanderpump to be done I do not even want to watch Oliver on here I'm so hold mad on at actually it. wait give me a second wait hold on let's spin it in a good way here hold on Garcelle gets accused oh I just had deja vu I love deja vu um oh it's still going on oh, stop ooh, you're fun. scaring me I don't like deja vu actually I love out. deja vu um I, people, Garcelle gets accused of not having storylines, like not bringing her own storyline by the haters, you know, they're haters. Yeah. So let's see how she handles this. If this becomes a storyline for her, she can okay. handle it. I know. I definitely think she can handle it. I just like would prefer Oliver not to embarrass her. Like, but yeah, she yeah. can definitely handle it. She can handle it. How about that? You know what? Let's see how she handles it. She'll handle it with grace. And maybe she'll be like a strong black mama, like piss the fuck off and be like, get your shit together yeah because like i'm like also oliver why are you inserting yourself in this like him and then going his on that dumbass pop interview that's what i'm saying like that's what i'm saying by insert not even the scene stuff like whatever that's fine like he had no idea what was going on like he's allowed to well no because he was married um but the the interview was so unnecessary that he did and it just for, like if you're trying to make us believe that you were separated uh, uh -huh. that ain't the way to go because you saying that practically what Sandoval yeah. and Raquel did was okay it's just yep. proving to me that you're capable of infidelity that's yeah like so we could have maybe believed like oh your your ex-wife was you know just giving was incorrect yeah. fine we could have but now when you do that we're like oh wait hold on yeah, it's like, it oh, it's like you you do that. You're, so you lie. So, you lie. So you you lied. lied. You cheated. Okay. You pretended cool. like you're separated. And Okay. Cool. Cool. Got it. Just, you confirmed it. Got it. Copy you didn't that. think anybody would believe her? Mm-hmm. It would be your- And there's- there's like a tactic too that people take where like they like Howie Mandel, you take the villain side because then it's a side and it gets you like press. Yes. And that's like what he, it's, it feels like that's what he did. He's yeah. like, if I do this, then it'll get picked up and it'll go circulating everywhere and I'll get my names and- the, you know social media blogs and shit and the thing is i'm not even like i get it this interview was to make tom look good and that's what everybody in that room was briefed on <laughs> yeah that was the agreement that's why he agreed to do it i get it 
but make it more believable. To not yeah. have any information negated any everything actually because I was like, so you're have you're giving me opinions on something you have never seen, haven't read about, you don't know, and you're taking it solely on Tom's uh, off of Tom's word, which is nothing. Yep. Nothing that you say now makes any. I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I you're uneducated, too, you're ignorant. Like, ironically, too, even though Howie was trying, excuse me, so hard to like just be easy on Tom, even Howie was like, "You're still not answering my question, Tom." Like even Howie was like, "I'm trying really hard to just make this a softball interview. You're you're avoiding my my questions. Like you're not answering." Did you tell this to Ariana? Yeah. And he didn't. He did not. No, he never didn't. did. He kept on trying to dance. Like he kept, he's saying all these little things and like going on tangents so we would be distracted. Yes. And it's like, you never answer the question. You, you feel like you made it clear to her through your distancing. Actions. I distanced myself. So she should know that we like aren't together. Like that's not a conversation you fucking asshole <laughs> and then he puts like, it on her he's like i said don't you notice i've been distant and she hadn't can you believe that oh what <laughs> so it's so fuck her because she didn't notice you were having an affair yeah and then also she he said something that was so oh my god like i was like the dumbest thing i've ever heard he was like she was purposely being blind to all the raquel stuff i mean maybe she was just taking my word for it like Oh, heaven forbid. I couldn't, I like, I was like, yeah, your partner believes <laughs> the things that you're telling her. Yeah, she's the weird one. Yeah, <laughs> like, because let's face it, because if she didn't believe what you were saying, you'd also freak out about that because you're Tom Sandoval. And it's like, if you don't believe you, he's like, really? Like the way he like throws fits over that. Yeah, oh, I just, you're such and a prick. I think I sent this to you in a voice memo, potentially, but like, because I didn't watch the whole um, Howie Mandel thing, but then I did end up later seeing a clip of this where he pretty much, like I thought, would take ownership of all the, the amazing doors that have been opened since this whole thing happened for Ariana, like Dancing with the Stars, uh, the Lifetime movie. I think she she had that photo shoot for, uh, was it Bloomingdale's or? Yeah. Um, something like that. And he kind of always needs to take a piece of that. He's always done that oh, in the yes. relationship. He's like, I'm so happy for her. She's thriving right now. Like, it's like, it's, you're welcome for this scandal. Now you have things. Yep. He We're loves already, to take a little yep. ownership of, of any success she has. Yep. Yep. We're already mad that he had to be on that damn cocktail book. I know. She did not. And she so did not want that to happen. He bullied her his way into that damn book. Mm-hmm. I hope she makes another cocktail book and it just flies off. This is the time. Fucking mm-hmm. get it, another one together. Let's do it. Take we it can all. Do it. Take take all the opportunities to to create some type of product that will be selling, selling, selling forever. That that you could just keep making those checks on. You know. Yeah. Just, just keep coming in even after this settles down and and Tom yeah. just and Tom keeps losing deals. Just let Tom keep losing deals because you know what? Tom has always sucked. And he deserves <laughs> to keep sucking. I'm excited to see her on Dancing with the Stars. Like she does have a you know, I know she can move. Like she was in Sheena's she was, when she yeah, was she back was. at the answer, season yeah, she was. 1. Um I'm I'm excited. I first of all, I am actually a huge fan of Dancing with the Stars. I used to watch for years. I ever since Tyra took over though, I I stopped cuz she's a terrible host. But um <laughs> I think she's not going to be the host next season, so Really? She's Ooh. she gets such bad reviews. She's so she's the worst host. Like it's it's so cringy. I had to stop watching. It's terrible. Terrible. But My I love the show. I, I actually hate Dancing with the Stars. Oh, really? As a da- as a dancer it offends me. Oh. <laughs> it's like we're watching these people who don't know how to dance and then they learn in like a few months or a month or something and then they like critique them as if they're like your lines aren't great I'm like obviously yeah no it was it's the thing is I feel like over the years like they still have that aspect of it where they're over critical of people that don't have any experience like no their lines aren't gonna be great um but th- I feel like the, some of the other ho- like judges that they have, like Derek Huff and stuff like that, 
he understands the assignment and he, okay. it, and then like the other other guy like I I do just enjoy seeing the progress of people. I don't really care about their judges critiques part okay. of it for me. I understand. I do like a good arc. I do like yeah. to see like the where how far they've come. I do like that aspect that I that yeah. makes sense to me to connect to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so you think you can dance used to be my jam that was my show but then that got- was a real because those are real dancers yes. like, and Loved so yeah it. real but they critiques. also did evolve Yes, yes, they of course, really yes. Came far. I I loved all I loved all those type of shows. I was watching them all. I watched yeah. uh, the. But so you think you can dance? Got so overrun with ads, like they kept they kept doing like, like everything was like, all right, let's have the dancers do a a dance for Honda Civic or something, and so they'd have to like dance around a Honda Civic. It was like, oh my god, this yeah. Is that, I I I personally, you know what show I don't like? The Voice. Yeah, no, I don't I, watch those shows. I don't like the voice because they don't actually, it's all about the judges making money and the oh. judge It's like really about the judges. And it's not to me, not about the actual performers like American Idol. They got a contract. A lot of those people went to, on to become very successful. American what, what? Idol in the beginning was like the show. The sh- It was the show. It was I don't the like, show. I don't like the voice because once the person wins, what, have you heard of them? No. Like, I don't appreciate that. Yeah, no, I I don't watch any like American but, because you want to know why those were like the beginning versions of those shows. So they actually were like phenomenons. Now it's yeah. like these shows just keep getting manufactured because it's ratings for the people that make them, not the actual talent. Yeah. You know, but like, oh, my God, Kelly Clarkson. It's like we all tuned in, man. And it's Fantasia, just so Fantasia. Oh, Fantasia. Ruben Stuttered. Woo. Clay Aiken. Clay Aiken. Um. I liked Elliot Yamin. He was a little underdog that I enjoyed. I enjoyed him thoroughly. We had, um, what's her name? Who people think she like made it further than she did. Uh, the, she's black. She was in Dreamgirls. Oh, uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson. Name? Jennifer Hudson. You know, she was like, I think she got like fifth place. Uh, my hot take on Jennifer Hudson is she's incredibly overrated. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's a she's not a good actress at all, and I think she should have oh. just stuck to singing. Oh, I'm not. She's not a good actress. She's terrible. Did you see her freaking Sex in the City, Sex in the City movie that oh was like my so God. it was very bad acting. The thing is, she's she was really good in Dreamgirls because that's like a mate, like a stagey. Well, it's it's literally a musical. Like it's yeah. like they only added in scenes that were talking because it was a movie, and they were like, it doesn't trans. Like the whole actual play is just them singing. Like there's no dialogue, but they yeah. were like, this doesn't really work for a movie. But like, it's she killed it in yeah. the in Dreamgirls. But I mean, Sex in the City. Beyonce was good in Dreamgirls, and she can't act either. Don't come yeah. at me, Beehive. I love Beyonce, but she we all know that it's not like stop. It's doing not her that. forte. It's not her forte. She's like, a she's Beyonce though. Like, for crying out loud, when someone said you're Beyonce, she went, Thank you. Like yes. she knows who she is. <laughs> yes, love her. But love. yeah, no, but yeah, no. Jennifer Hudson is an I thought you were talking about her singing though. I was like, girl, what? She's a no. great singer. Um, but yeah, no, no acting, no. No, I <laughs> when watched- I saw her in Sex in the City, I was like Oh my God, this is bad. No, when I watched, <laughs> I saw Dreamgirls in the theaters twice just because I had to watch her do, and I'm telling you, like, over and over again. Like, I was like, yeah. It was like going to church. Wow, that was a fun tangent. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, guys. That's it. All right. That was, uh, that was a crazy episode. I've already seen it three times. Damn, how? I watched, I watched it twice last night. Okay. And then another time today. All right, guys. Love Ooh. you. Mean it. Stay messes. Bye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, would you mind leaving me a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you are listening? If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget there is the super thanks option down at the bottom, the little button with the dollar sign and the heart. And also I'm on buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks bravo if you want to buy me a little coffee or two or five. And my Patreon, that is where I'm covering all of the classic Bravo jams. 
If you want to follow me over there and subscribe, link is in the description. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok at She Speaks Bravo. And whoever the guest was for today, all their information is always in the episode description. So if you want to follow them and check them out, check there for the info. And any of the sponsor codes that I mentioned in this episode will also be in the description. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.